Hello all and welcome to another metal casting video. As some of you may remember, I made this nice bronze bar some time ago. It's 12% uh, tin and 88% copper. Basically uh, bronze uh, a bronze alloy used for like spearheads and, um, and and small swords and knives and stuff back in the bronze age. Um, 20% tin and 80% copper would be bell bronze, which has a slightly lighter color. But I went for the 12% version just because uh, I like uh, I like the more orangey color. Anywho, I also got uh, the male snail from the craftsman. I uh, was able to acquire this uh, in a uh, purchase. I think it sold out within like one minute. And I was uh, lucky, one of the lucky ones uh, to have got it. Now I'm going to try to make a mold out of this and then cast it in bronze for a, a fellow YouTuber, uh, the man in the shed, Ian Matthews, because um, he uh, keeps promising to send out stuff, uh, but I don't think he can actually find the post office. So that's why we keep calling him uh, Mail Snail or Snail Mail. And uh, so that's when uh, I thought I'd make this for him. Now. I'm not sure if I'll be able to uh, ram up a mold using that in one piece, probably not. It's going to have to be a two-part mold. I'm going to use my flask for that and see if I can make like a divide like right down the middle. The eyes are going to be a bit difficult because there's going to be some undercut, maybe at the bag here as well, I don't know. I'm going to do my best to try to ram up a mold for, for it. And when that's done, I'll set up the furnace and... Uh, melt the ingot and while that is melting I can ram up the flasks. Hold on. Okay, so this is the crucible in which I actually made this bar. That was the first use, this will be the second use. One thing with these uh, graphite crucibles, don't just drop stuff in there. Just always carefully slide it in there. And this is why I like this ingot mold. It, the ingots fit in here exactly. So carefully till it's on the bottom. That goes in there. Hundred. Then it goes to eleven fifty, which is the maximum of this device. Um, melting point of copper is one thousand eighty-five Celsius. So this is. Only slightly over copper, but because tin has been added, the melting point is slightly lower because the melting point of tin is quite a lot lower. It's like 230 Celsius. So uh, I'm guessing this will start melting uh, well before 1000. Hopefully. I guess. So I'll, I'll be at least 100 Celsius over the melting point. And I'm going to just wait until this lot is all completely molten. And in the meantime, because this is going to take some time, let's uh, let's ram up the mold. So I'm going to have to do the reverse cope and drag uh, trick again here because it's a solid piece and not a two-part mold. Usually you take this part, put it upside down, put half of your pattern in there and then uh, turn it around, stick the other half of your pattern on, put on your cope and then uh, ram up that part and then take it apart eventually take it apart and take out your pattern and make uh, gates and sprues and feeders and whatnot but in this case not so much so I'm gonna have to do it like reverse so I'm gonna start with the top part and I'm gonna just fill this completely with uh, green sand then place place in the snail halfway and then ram up the bottom part so that the pattern the good pattern is actually in here and then start from uh, like a, like how you would usually start uh, hopefully that'll work I'm uh, kind of a bit concerned about the part between the eyes here maybe I can jam a bit of sand in there and later grind that off I uh, actually I'm smudging the thing a bit because my hands are all sandy now but uh, I'm gonna use parting powder anyway 
Uh, I hope this uh, this will work. Let's uh, let's see. Let's uh, speed things up a bit. Finally, get to use the sand rammer again. Yes. Okay, now let's see how to go about this. I'm probably going to be placing placing them in halfway about here. Then I will be placing a big feeder somewhere there. My tapered sprue will be there. And then my pouring basin will be there. And I will make a couple of vents from, from the eyes probably. And from, I don't know, maybe from his mouth. Maybe from the back here as well. Something like that. This isn't the important part though, so let's just see if I can draw a bit of an outline here to get him in halfway. Yeah, something like that. There, that looks in there halfway. Now to fill all this up and then uh, ram up the other half. Okay, that's in there nice all halfway. There is going to be undercut here and at the eyes, of course. I wonder uh, how that's going to come out. But we shall see. This is the bottom, so it doesn't have to be super neat. I noticed before that this piece broke out, but since this part is going to have to be redone anyway, it doesn't really matter. Now. Let's see how this comes out. On which side will the snail be stuck? We shall see. Maybe better to do it like this. Undercut, but the basic shape is in there. I'm gonna carefully place this back in there. That is actually not bad for something as elaborate as this. Right, this part. Back in the bucket. Mm 
there. More powder. Right, and more sand ramming. Before I open this up again, let's go quickly see how the bronze is doing. Well, it's over 1100 now. Let's see. Oh, look at that. It's uh, just about all molten. Let's give this some uh, more time and uh, let's get back to mold making. Right, let's give that a couple more minutes. I'm gonna have to anyway because this is not done yet. Let's see how this came out. I wonder. Which side is it? Oh boy. There is probably going to be a hell of a lot of grinding on this one. Now to get this out in one piece. Well, in one piece shouldn't be too difficult, but... Don't want to tap it too hard. Might break. I don't know. Or I might damage it for future casting. Well, pretty soon I'm going to have a 3D printer so I can probably get the, the pattern for this uh, at the Craftsman and then make it a two part mold. If that happens anytime soon, then uh, I might just redo the thing. Right, so now he has kind of sort of like a mohawk. I guess this should be, I should be able to grind this off using my Dremel. I guess. Let's just go ahead with this and see what happens. So it's a good thing you can kind of still see the circle for the feeder. I hope the feeder is going to be enough because this is quite a fat little snail. And you always want your feeder to be bigger than your actual part that you're casting. Let's just go with this. So this will have to go all the way through. I should have formed this beforehand. Mm. 
Nou, voor zo'n vent. Sprue is going to end up here. I'll just use the non-tapered copper pipe. Pouring basin. Well, just about ready to pour. I made a nice little setup here, a bit higher for easy pouring. Put uh, a mold there, which I'm now going to preheat because we don't want the repeat of. Wow, that's quite a lot. Um, we don't want no explosions. This thing's spraying all over the place. It's a new tank. There goes the moisture. Right, let's get the crucible. Wow, that solidified fast. And I hope that was enough. So I'm not too sure it filled the whole thing, but we will see. There's always remelt if uh, there's a failure. Let's give this some time to cool off and I'll put the crucible back in the furnace. So it's been about, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes, I guess. I had a bite to eat, had a drink. Let's see what this has become. This isn't that warm anymore. Oh wow, look at the moisture on the bottom side. When uh, heat goes one way, cold goes the other way, apparently. Could have been the moisture out of the sand, by the way, that came up. Probably that. Alright, let's get these clamps off. And what have we got? This side looks promising. Nice color. Really hot though. There it goes. And I think we might have a successful cast. Backpack is on there. It's it's all in one piece. It's gonna be a lot of grinding around the eyes. But I'm quite happy with how this came out. Let's uh, let's clean this up and quench it and uh, get a closer look at it. Let's get the bucket of water. Yeah. Round and round. I think uh, I think the feeder did its job. And I had it slightly angled, so that it would fill all the way. 
bottom part looks best. That's uh, because of gravity and stuff. Uh, this probably needs a bit. Probably some of the talc that uh, burned. I wonder. I'm gonna need a bit of grinding. A bit of a lot of grinding. It's a successful cast if you don't mind all the flashing of course. That doesn't ha have much to do with the cast itself. But the, the actual pour went pretty well. Pretty well. That's kind of what happened. All right, enough uh, of this. Let's get the grinding. Okay, so the fact that this is still attached is actually pretty handy because now I can place it in here on a slightly slight elevation. Let's uh, start by giving it a little bit of wire brush. Well, you can already tell this is probably going to be awesome when it's done. Don't think there's uh, much need for uh, for cleaning other than uh, tiny bits in there. I'm going to continue with this and uh, when I get to the next step, I'll show you more. Well, it's a start, I guess. I just uh, found out that my Dremel broke. Again! But using the angle grinder, I actually got some uh, nice details back. For all the very fine details, I probably do need my Dremel, so... I'm gonna go and see if I can have it either repaired or replaced, and if not, then I'm gonna have to buy a new one. I'm gonna continue on this for uh, a bit more. And uh, show you what I uh, what I can uh, achieve just with the grinder at the end. So there you have it people, a nice shiny bronze male snail and a slightly smudged plastic one. I can of course use this again and again to make more, which I will probably do in the future. Try to make it out of some different metals, maybe brass, maybe aluminium bronze, maybe aluminium. I think it came out way, way better than expected. 
the side view. And uh, even uh, got the bottom uh, quite nice and uh, shiny and, uh, and flat. I was thinking of stamping it, but I'm not going to. In the chance of maybe damaging it. So yeah. So Ian Matthews, if you would like your bronze trophy mail snail, send me a sticker. If I get the sticker, you get the mail snail. Uh, big thanks to uh, the craftsman as well for uh, uh, making this available. Uh, I purchased this on his Etsy store uh, back then and uh, uh, it was actually sold out uh, in like uh, one or two minutes and I was lucky enough to get one. So uh, I am now a uh, proud owner of a male snail mold and um, Ian will probably soon be proud owner of a bronze male snail. Uh, I might do another one and send one to the craftsman himself because he likes uh, stuff like that and uh, a, a little bit of appreciation for his work as well. So yeah, I'll put a link in the description to the craftsman if you want to check out his awesome uh, channel and his work. And I'll put a link in the description to Ian Matthews, the man in the shed, because he does have some uh, interesting content. And uh, he's just uh, an amusing guy to watch. Apparently he's not too quick with sending out stickers. Hence, male snail. So thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. I uh, really had uh, a lot of fun with this project, uh, especially in the beginning, thinking that this would never work and having this uh, come out dang near perfect. So, see you all on the next one and keep steady crafting.